when I analyzed it, it was $21.03. Now it's moved up a bit. It said $22.96. But the Yahoo analysts say it can move up to $40 in the next 12 months. Hey guys, today I want to speak to you about a stock that I ventured upon actually yesterday or the day before, but I analyzed it yesterday. And that company is Semler Scientific. Now, this company is, you know, I like to break the stocks in my watch list down into three tiers. Three stars, the most fundamentally sound. Two stars beneath that. One star, the least fundamentally sound, but still fundamentally sound enough to make the watch list. Semler Scientific is a three star, most fundamentally sound on my watch list. Now, they have an earnings date. They're dropping an earnings report on April, um, not April, I'm sorry, on August 8th. And, you know, I always say about earnings reports, they're like going to a casino. The earnings report can come out good and the stock can really jump. It can come out bad and the stock can really drop. So... I don't want you grabbing up earnings reports right or grabbing up stocks right before the earnings report drops unless you're prepared for the results. It may come out good, it may come out bad, and it really drops. But if you buy a good stock, here it's like three months in advance. If you buy a good stock and it moves up, and then the earnings report comes out and the stock drops. Even if it drops, what you're losing is probably part of your gains, possibly all of your gains. But it's not really cutting into what you paid out so much. So this earnings report drops on August 8th. Now the interesting thing about this company when I analyzed it, it was $21.03. Now it's moved up a bit. It said $22.96. But the Yahoo analysts say it can move up to $40 in the next 12 months. That's almost a 100% return. That's around, well, from the 2103 that I found it at, to the um, $40 would be an actual 90% um, return. And when we look into the analytics on this company, we'll see why that's very possible. So as you see, it dropped here right a few weeks back, came here, and then another little drop. Um, earlier this week, which is what led us to a point of it now being at its annual low price. In any event, let's leave here and jump into the analytics on this company. So we see that if we look at the earnings per share for this company, in 2019, it was $1.88. 2020, it was $1.74. 2021, it was $2.12. 2022, it dropped back to $1.79. Then in 2023, jumped up to $2.63. And now we're in 2024. The year is not complete yet. We're just in May right now, and the year's 
not, not going to be complete to December, but we see that the Yahoo analysts are projecting that the earnings per share is $2.63 now. It may go a little lower, it may go a little higher, it may stay the same. But this is their projection as of now. So, um, like I said, when I looked at this stock the other day, it was $21.03. It already moved up to $22.96 in a couple of days. So this stock has already jumped up like 10% in two days. Right, I, I um, actually missed it yesterday, but I bought it this morning and already walked away with a 5% return by the end of the day. In any event, let's look at the high and the low prices for this stock. Now, in 2019, the low price was $1.53 a share. The high price was $1.53 a share. I'm a little confused as to that, but this is what um, this is the numbers that I'm getting from the data providers. In 2020, the low price was a dollar twenty dollar fifty three. High price was a dollar fifty three. So no change. But in 2021, the low price was a dollar fifty three. The high price was a hundred and forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. That was a nine thousand seven hundred and three point twenty seven percent return on your money. And then in twenty twenty two, the low price was twenty seven dollars and seventy five cents a share. High price was ninety three dollars and twenty five cents a share. That was a 236.04% return on your money. Finally, we come to 2023. The low price was $19.28. High price was $46.29. That was a 140.09% return on your money. All of these in one year. Now, for 2024, the low price has been $21.03 so far. Yahoo analysts are projecting the high price to be $40. That may be what it moves up to. That may be a conservative estimate that Yahoo is giving you, and maybe it moves higher. But in any event, if it moves no higher than that $40 a share, that would be a 90.20% return on your money. That's from low to high. Bear in mind, if you guys buy this, you're getting it a little bit later. So it may be less. It may be 80. It may be 70. But still, I consider it a decent return. And if it moves higher than 40 it may be 90 or more. Look at the other years. Nothing under 140 from 2021. In any event, like I said, when I looked at this stock, it was $21.03. But as of end of market today, $22.96. They have an earnings report dropping April, dropping August 8th or the week of. And earnings per share 2.63. The low PE, yes, the, the couple of days ago when I caught it was 8. It's already started moving up. 
So the PE has moved up to 8.73, but it was 8 when I caught it. Now, a new figure I've started adding to my analysis is what's called the free cash flow yield. And for all who I've looked at who've spoken on that subject, they suggest us getting a free cash flow yield of about 5% on a stock. I really don't consider it a free cash flow yield when it comes to choosing my stocks. It's just a figure that I've added. But it's not a figure that's going to make me choose or not choose a stock. But for those who do use it and weigh heavily upon it, they usually tell us look for a free cash flow yield of 5 well, this stock is 10.34. Consider that's dividing those free cash flow years by five, dividing up five years. That gives us a free cash flow yield of 10.34%. Now let's move down and look at our income statement and we see that when we look at the income statement this company in 2019 they made 32 million seven hundred and sixty seven thousand small company I know 32 million is not a small amount of money for us but for companies, some companies are making hundreds of millions, some are making a billion, some are making billions, a couple I've seen making trillions. So this is a pretty small company. But yet, out of that 32767000 after paying all expenses, they retained fifteen million eighty four thousand for a forty six point zero three percent profit margin. Now that is an impressive margin. It drops off in the next few years, but even when it drops off, it's still impressive. I've seen companies with like 5% profit margins. I'm not jumping over the furniture to get at those, but they're a little acceptable. I've seen 10%. 10% is not great, not good, but it's acceptable. 15 better, 20%. Now my ears are perking up. 20% looks good. 46%? These are technology company numbers. So let's look at the next year. In 2020, our COVID lockdown year, sales and revenue was 38,603,000. After paying all expenses, um, the company retained fourteen million seven thousand. That was a thirty-six point twenty-eight percent profit margin. That's still pretty decent. I prefer the forty-six, but thirty-six and in the thirty is still pretty decent. Pretty good, I would say. Not pretty decent. 2021, they made 53,027,000. Notice how their sales and revenue is increasing every year. Every year they're making more and more money overall. The net income after paying all expenses was 17,222,000. That was a 32.48% profit margin. 
2022, they made 56686000 After paying all expenses, they retained 14325000 That was a 25.27% profit margin. Notice the profit margin can fluctuate a little, drop a little, it goes back up the next year a little. But the sales and revenue is increasing every year, and so is the net income. So when we come to 2023, sales and revenue 68,164,000. Net income, 20,583,000. That was a 30.19% profit margin. So, this is a small company, but I can see it growing sort of quickly, especially if they add to the number of things that they're doing, services they're providing. Now, as for return on equity, another impressive area. 2019, it was 115.38%. That was astounding. But 2020, it dropped down and it dropped from there. 2020, 47.01%. 2021, 37.81%. 2022, 25.73%. 2023, 28.67%. Even at a 28, or even a 25 for that matter, but particularly 28, I still say that I like where their return on equity is going. And very low debt. If we look at their debt to equity, 2019, 39.88%. 2020, 16.27%. 2021, 11.25%. 2022, 12.60%. And 2023, 8.75, 73%. And I like to have my debt to equity under 200%. They are well beneath that. So if we look at their balance sheet, when we look at current assets and current liabilities, Current assets just about doubles current liabilities in 2019. In 2020, it more than doubles. It covers it by a few years, as is the case with 2021, 2022, and 2023. And then when we look at total assets and total liabilities, we pretty much see around the same thing happening. So this is actually, I've been analyzing companies for about 20 years. This could be one of the best balance sheets I've ever seen. Can't guarantee it's the best. I've seen a lot of balance sheets. But as it, it stands out to me, it's definitely one of the best. Now, they don't pay a dividend. As for their changing capital stock, when it comes to stock, we love to see a company as investors when a company buys back more shares of their stock and we hate to see when they sell more shares. Well, this company bought back 
more shares or sold more shares for three years. But let's look at the amounts that they sold. 60,000 worth in 2019, 230,000 worth in 2020, and 58,000 worth in 2021. Now, when they started buying back, let's look at the amounts that they bought back. 4,823,000 worth in 2022 and 1,898,000 worth in 2023. So I, I, I feel they're buying back, well, not only what I feel, but they're buying back a lot more than they're selling. If we go to free cash flow, We're looking at the money they're going to have at the end of the year. 2019, 11,030,000. 2020, 14,356,000. 2021, 15,231,000. 2022, 15,303,000. And 2023, 20,000,000. 502,000. And one of the reasons I like looking at cash flow so much is when a company pays a dividend, that dividend is paid from the cash flow. So the cash flow after the dividends are paid will tell you if that company can really afford to be paying a dividend or not. Well, this company has free cash flow but they don't pay a dividend, so it's not even an issue with them. Now, if we come to the statistics at the bottom, this company has a beta of 0 0.92, and we know that the beta is how volatile the stock is, how much it moves. The market moves at a beta of about 1. So if a stock moves at a beta of less than 1, it moves less than the general market. If it moves at a beta of more than 1, it moves more than the general market. This stock has a beta of 0 0.92. So it doesn't move as much as the market, but pretty close. Beta is not a factor I consider in whether I'm going to buy a stock or not, but I'm just mentioning it here for you guys' benefit for those who do use it. Now, there are 7.03 million outstanding shares of this stock. Of that 7.03 million, which is a small number compared to other companies, most companies have 20 million and above. Don's were 100 million or hundreds of millions. I've seen a few even with a trillion outstanding shares of stock. They only have 7.03 million outstanding shares. And of those, 22.23% is owned by insiders, those who work for or are involved with the company. Now, generally when I look at insiders for a company, I can find a lot of companies there where their insiders are 1% or under 1%. 22.23% is an amazing number. Institutions, big banks and institutions, 53.64% of this company is owned by institutions. Like I said, they don't give a dividend, but their book value is 11.26 and the PB ratio is 2.04. I don't really use the book value much I have a video on the channel which is the truth about book value. It explains why I don't consider it a factor much 
in my analysis, I'd rather see if the company is buying back shares of stock than to be bogged down on the book value, unless it's a negative book value. And even Miss Jennifer Oliva Herring Harrington is the CEO, and she was appointed in December of 2022. And similar scientific is in the medical devices industry, healthcare sector. So in any event, guys, that's my analysis for similar scientific. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Have a great day.